everybody, Bobby here from the GM table, and today we're doing a review of Dark Matter for D&D 5th Edition. Okay, so this book is massive. I am not going to be able to go in depth with every little thing. I mean, I could, but we'd be looking at an hour plus video and well, I don't got the time for that. Most people aren't going to actually watch that. And really, I think once I run down the stuff in the book, it's going to tell you whether or not this is something you want to check out. Now, before we get into anything, I want to say that, yes, Dark Matter came out a little over a year ago, but right now they have a Kickstarter going on for a boxed starter set. Additionally, within the Kickstarter stuff, you can get a physical copy of the core book, which is what we're covering today, and a bundle of the box starter set and the core book. So if this seems like your kind of thing, that is honestly probably the best value you're going to get right now. Plus, you get to help out the publisher put out a new starter set, and I'm always for starter sets. It helps people get into the hobby. Getting into the book proper, before we go into everything in the book, I think it's probably best to describe what the hell this is. So Dark Matter is a science fantasy setting for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. You could think of it as sci-fi. You could think of it as science fiction if you're not familiar with science fantasy, but that's going to cut it short because this is a setting where, yes, you can have cybernetic However, theirs aren't called cybernetics. It's grafting, and it's some really cool stuff. Actually, I just realized my script doesn't even cover that. Yes, there are essentially cybernetic implants in this book. But at the same time, you can do that. You can have pilots and all that cool stuff. You can also still just straight up be a wizard. You can straight up be a barbarian on a spaceship with a light sword or a laser axe kicking ass. In a lot of ways, this is 5th edition's answer to Starfinder. And along with that, this has about the crunch level of D&D 5th edition compared to Starfinder's crunch level of Pathfinder. Some of you might see that as a bad thing if you like really crunchy games. I'm not one of those people. I prefer this level of crunch. And that is what really interested me about this book and why I picked it up. On top of that, a lot of the mechanics in this book and a lot of the ideas borrow heavily from the 5th edition Eberron books. There are common magic items like an Eberron, one of the races, the Vect, are essentially the Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron's version of Warforged in a lot of ways, which does sometimes feel like they may have recycled one or two things here or there, but there's so much stuff in this book, it really doesn't overshadow anything, and you can't really go in assuming oh, hey, you should have all the D&D core books, plus you should have this Eberron book if you want our book to work. No. When it's like one or two things and it doesn't seem like they just fully ripped it off, the fact are different from Warforged in a lot of fluff and story ways, and it's not 100% just a copy-paste, so it works. You can just, if you've read Wayfinder's Guide and you read the Vect, you're going to go, oh, they're just the Wayfinder's Guide Warforged. Now, when I say there is plenty in there, let's get into me literally just listing how many things rather than breaking it all down, because again, that will take forever, right? This book has seven new races, one of which are the Vec, so you could say whether or not they're new. But they also have races that are amoebas and races that look completely human, except they have, like, eagle heads and they're all Egyptian. And I actually really love space aliens with an Egyptian theming. Maybe it's because I grew up on Stargate. I don't know. But there is some seriously cool stuff in here. On top of the races... We have a ton of classes, including a completely new class from the ground up called the Gadgeteer. And unlike a lot of books where it goes, oh, you have a new class and we have like two subclasses because, you know, it's fifth edition. You have to have subclasses. So here's some choices. No, they have five subclasses. The Gadgeteer is fully fleshed out. There is a ton to go there. I will say when you break it down, the Gadgeteer feels like it might be a little more powerful than the other classes when you mix them with the core stuff, but that's just how it is when you're dealing with third party things. Sometimes it's not massively overpowerful game breaking. It's just the gadgeteer can take things like micro missiles, which is essentially at will magic missile, which is pretty freaking powerful, but it won't break the game. It's not going to do anything crazy for the classes you do have specifically, you know, the, the classes from the PHB, there are 19 new subclasses. This is why I'm saying I can't even just go through the names of everything. I mean, I could, but that would take forever if I tell you each of the subclasses and break down what they are. 
there's 19 of them. And then on top of that, there's seven more subclasses for the classes that Mage Hand Press, who makes Dark Matter, have put out in other books, things like the Gunslinger, where it goes, okay, you use Complete Gunslinger, and now there's a new subclass. But you don't have to buy their other books. The thing is, these new subclasses, well, in D&D 5th Edition, you just need the core part of the class, and then the subclass fills out its part. They offer the core version of each of these classes for free on their website, and it's not buried somewhere for you to find or you have to know to go to the website. Every single one of the subclasses in here that is based off of a class that they sell a book for, they took the time to put a sidebar in every one of them to let you know, go to this URL, you can get the core version of the class for free. No, you do not have to buy extra books. If you want to and you want to check out, like, again, for example, the Gunslinger, you want to go check out all the other Gunslinger subclasses and stuff, cool, go buy the other book. But if you're just using the subclasses for Dark Matter, you do not have to buy anything else. What isn't in the book, they will give you for free to fill it out. I appreciate this because you could just as easily gone, well, we gave you 19 subclasses. These are here both as new material for people who were already fans of our stuff and also as a way to hook you in to buy more of our stuff. No, they didn't do that. You don't have to do that. I appreciate that. There are also six new backgrounds, and these are things like, you know, space pilots. It's the stuff you would expect. There's also a ton of feats. I am not even getting close to breaking down how many feats. One that really interests me, because there are different types of feats. You got your generic feats, and you have a good bit of racial feats, which are cool. But there's also role feats. And these are feats specifically for what your job on the starship is. And there's a sidebar with optional rules of the GM can decide whether if you want that to matter for your character, you got to buy the feat or the GM can give you the feat for your job for free, either when you get your starship or if you start the game with the starship, you can just start with it, which is, hey, free starting feat, but it's a little more limited. There's a lot of really cool stuff with that. In fact, feats are where I also want to bring up one of my favorite mechanical portions of Dark Matter because I said that there's seven new races, but one of the races is called Near Human. And this covers all of the B sci fi aliens, all the stuff where, like, when you're talking original Star Trek, where it's a human, but their skin's just green, all the way up to the Planet of the Apes, apes, which is it's basically a human, but it's actually a big ape. They get something within their race called You Take a Near Human Feat. And these are feats you can only take if you're a near human, and you have to take it first level, but with one feat, you then determine what type of near human you are. And with that, they add like one to two dozen other races that all just qualify as near human. So there's actually a ton of races. And with the near human feat, you can kind of break down, look at it and use it as a way to make even more races really easily. All right. There's so much versatility in characters you can make with this book that everybody can be something weird and it's probably already included in the book and you don't even have to homebrew. But if you do need to, there's also stuff in there that'll help you point the right direction if for some reason they don't already have an alien close to what you want it to be. Now, beyond character creation stuff, there's also some of the things you would expect, including a ton of gear. You have your basic gear, which includes, you know, molecular knives, blasters. There's a ton of stuff for blasters and laser guns and all that. There are laser swords, so you can go all Jedi and stuff like that. But then you get into the magic items, which are more like magic tech. And this is where it really shines for me because you can get stuff like hoverboards. You can get totally not a Game Boy, which you can play during a short rest to give you bonuses, which is really cool. As the above mentioned and almost always expected, totally not a lightsaber, all the way up to totally not the BFG from Doom is in here as a magic item. Yeah. All right. This game, you could say, oh, it's so cool. It's all. the only way to describe this. I know I did it with the new Eberron book as well, but this game is rad. Okay. I'm really happy. I'm coming across a lot of RPGs right now. The only way I can describe them is rad as hell because that's how I feel about Dark Matter. Now, beyond that, there's also rules for starships, specifically starship combat and traveling and all of that. And I will say, the Starship rules are what cinched it for me that I didn't like Starfinder. 
there were a lot of ideas in Starfinder stuff I liked, even though it was a crunchier game. But I was like, okay, there's enough I like about it compared to what I wasn't too sure about. I'm going to go with this. But then we got into the Starship combat stuff, and it felt like we had to stop the entire game to play a game of X-Wing. And given how long it took, it could be an entire session of X-Wing, even though you expected to come to play Starfinder. This is not that. While they are their own rules and Starship combat is definitely its own thing, it's not so crunchy it feels like it grinds the game to a halt. Which, I'm giving Starfinder as an example because it's also the most direct comparison of a setting and type of game, but that's not the only time I've seen that stuff with ship-based and vehicle-based combat. I'm happy this seems fairly smooth. It works well so far with what I've experienced. I'm very happy with it. Once you get past that, there are also over 50 pages of new monsters and creatures and NPC stats for enemies to use. There's almost 20 pages of new spells. I think it's like 18 pages. So there's a ton of stuff on that. End. This book's huge. This is going to be almost a 15 minute video of me just telling you how many things are in the book without even going into depth. Now, if you do want me to go into depth, I could easily do a specific video on the races or do a specific video on certain subclasses and stuff. The thing is, I don't know if you want that since this is, you know, a third party book. If it is, let me know. And you got a comment to let me know. There's no other way I'm going to know about it. So comment down below if that is more stuff you want. And if enough people care about it and show that they want me to make videos on it, I'll make a few more videos on Dark Matter. Dark Matter is really cool. In fact, that does bring up the fact that we actually have a new stream starting. It's going to be lasting about three weeks of me bringing back my Mana Wave setting. And the first time we're bringing it back, we're going to bring it back specifically using the Dark Matter rules. I don't know if we're going to keep using the Dark Matter rules. That's nothing against it. Just there's some other things in the works coming that I can't talk about yet. Maybe some books that we have coming out. But we're going to use the Dark Matter rule book to play three weeks of man wave. So we're going to have some stuff over on our Twitch channel to give you a good firsthand experience of what this game has to offer. And I'm just really impressed with this. All right. The PDF is about $30, but if you go on the Kickstarter, you go get a physical copy, especially if you, once you bundle it with the new starter set coming out, you can get this for a pretty good deal to get digital physical plus a physical box set of extra stuff with maps and pre-gens and another adventure and everything. So there's plenty here, but even at the $30 price tag for the PDF, you are getting your money's worth. This is a big ass book. This fundamentally, I don't even want to say it fundamentally. This adds so much to D&D 5th edition. It completely changes the setting, but it's not one of those that totally changes how the game is played. Science fantasy is just your dungeon delving in derelict ships instead of dungeons. So this isn't one of those where we completely overhauled the game to do something that the game was never intended for. It fits. It fits like a freaking glove. And I love it. But with that, I will catch you guys next week. Bye.